Hello there, my name is Martin Besosi. Um, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk about native authentication uh, with Pakis in the context of the Kilocomp24. I would like to start by giving a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm from Argentina. I have been working in the identity space for almost 18 years. I'm a founder and identity access manager architect. In relation to Kiklo, um, well, I usually try to help within the Kiklo community. Uh, last year, I was one of the reviewers of the second edition of the Kiklo book. Um, well, I usually like to talk about modern identity standard authorization topics and how to implement them within the Kiklo platform. So let's start by reviewing the agenda. So you can see here a lot of topics that we are going to see today. So let's jump into the beginning. Okay, for the ones who have been playing in the identity space, uh, nowadays we are dealing with this traditional browser-based authentication experience. So if you want to implement OpenID Connect, uh, whether you are in SPA, native app or web app, you end up implementing the authorization code flow there, which relies in this traditional redirect approach. Or if you are in a native app, you end up um, opening a browser there in order to handle the authentication step. So my view here is that those experiences are not ideal and mostly in the mobile scenario because who wants to open a browser when you are in a native app? Therefore, you can see here some of the main reasons for choosing this uh, native approach. The first one, as usual, you want to have no redirection or opening a browser when you are logging into a native app. Then you want to reduce the friction and the potential user drop-off when you are implementing some of your digital journeys. As well as you want to enhance the user experience without compromising security. In other words, you can see here, if you go to Google and search for Kiklo login without, you will notice that the first three results are Kiklo login without redirect, without password, and without a browser. So the main idea of talking about this new native authentication experience with a passwordless authentication mechanism is to try to answer those questions. In the next slide, we're going to start discussing the proposed solution. So nowadays we have a draft, which is called WoW2 for first party application, uh, which offers uh, an API based authentication approach. So following this specification, you ended up having some kind of direct integration between the application and the IDP. And thanks to that, the application is able to follow and implement the authentication step defined on the identity provider. We are going to implement here the OpenID Connect for handling the authentication, then WoW2, which is an access delegation standard, and on top of it, the WoW2 for first party application. So this specification is an extension of the WoW2, which is great, and it introduces a new endpoint, which is used by the application through POST requests in order to implement the authentication journey defined on the identity provider. Another point to have in mind here is that this draft is not yet supported by Kiklo, uh, therefore we ended up developing an extension, uh, custom SPIs, in order to implement all the things that we are going to see today. Before jumping into the details, I would like to describe the idea of the first party application because in this specification is quite uh, important. So you can see here um, a paragraph that comes from this uh, specification that it says basically that the specification must not be used by third party applications. And then it says something like the authorization server must be able to identify that the client who's making the call is a first party application. So, the idea of first party application means that the application and the IDP belongs to the same entity. 
This is the, the definition of first party app. Then when you move to the O2 scenario, you know that you can play with a confidential client or a public client. So the problem with public client, I would say that there is no easy way to identify the application. This means it's not, there is no easy way to do some kind of authentication of a public client in order to know that that client is a first party app. So in this, uh, if, you, if you are in a native application within a public client, you can play with these two approaches. The first one, app attestation. Nowadays, Google and Apple come with these attestation APIs that you can use in order to have some kind of proof about the app, at, app authenticity. And then you can use the WoW2 attestation-based client uh, authentication, which is also a draft nowadays, but it's help you to do the app attestation at the token endpoint level. So when I'm talking about token, re token requests or token endpoint, it's basically because we are following the WoW2 uh, specification. So now we are good to move on with the authentication steps. As usual, uh, when we are talking about authentication, uh, you can split the process in two steps. The first one, you end up defining the, the kind of flow that, that, you, that we want to use. In this case, we are using this direct kind of flow. And then you end up choosing the authentication mechanism on the identity provider. So, in this case, we are going to use uh, passkeys, and here is like a quite common definition, which is an easy, a secure alternative to password. But then we know that passkeys is a vision resistant authentication mechanism that offers to the user a way to sign in with biometrics, pin, or pattern. Um, behind the scenes, the user ended up using one of the user verification that comes from this device. Another point to bear in mind is in order to use passkeys uh, within the Kikilob platform, we first deploy this custom uh, extension. Then uh, we created a new flow, which called uh, first party login. And then we added like a new uh, step with this passkeys uh, authenticator. So let's move on with the sequence flow. Let me just enable the pointer here. Here we are. So I would say that this is a quite common um, WoW2 sequence flow because you ended up seeing this uh, user uh, application and identity provider. So this uh, flow, uh, I would say that the main difference here is there is no browser here during the authentication step. Then another point to have in mind is you end up having this kind of a direct communication between the application and, and the IDP thanks to this new API-based authentication approach so in the point two, uh, basically the, ap the application sends the authorization challenge request to the new endpoint introduced by, new, by this uh, standard. And then the IDP sends this authorization challenge error response back to the application. And then the application grabs that error, identify the authentication step, and then is able to trigger the, in this case, the passkeys uh, selection. In the step five, you can see here the user experience within a mobile device, which is great. The user stays in the app. There is no friction here. It just with a few clicks, which is the passkey selection. And then, oops, I'm overlapping the image. Well, this is the user verification mechanism, which is in this example, touch ID. Another point to to have in mind is once the authentication step is done, 
the application receives the authorization code and here we are talking about how to uh, expect the authorization code flow. So this is why we are seeing in the next step the common token request and then as the result the application receives the identity token which is the usual the ID token that comes from OpenID Connect, the access token and in the um, mobile scenario you can play with the refresh token as well and finally the application creates the session and then it sends the uh, the the home page for, for instance to the user as we can see here um, well then let me jump into the live demo here we are so, before going into the details, I would like to give a general idea of this uh, demo. The first point that I would like to discuss is we are in a first party uh, application scenario because the application and the IDP belongs to the same bank entity. This is the first point that we should have in mind. Another point is here I'm using a web app just for the sake uh, of the demo. And we are and we're going to see the uh, pass keys login within a mobiles and then in a, in a browser. Um, in order to review the use cases, uh, the first one is the login with pass keys. And then we are going to review the step up authentication step when the user try to, for instance, uh, manage their own uh, bank accounts. So let's start by reviewing the, the first use case. Here is the signing experience with a pass case. No friction. The user stays in the app thanks to this API based authentication with pass case. And just with a few clicks, this is how the authentication step is done. Then we are going to jump here to the step up authentication step. Here is just a model saying that the biometric is needed in order to move on. Well, one of the cool things is the user experience is the same, pass key selection, touch ID, and now the user is able to see the account information. So, now we are going to jump into the browser scenario you can see here that the pass keys experience is different so you end up this uh, this is the default pass keys experience within a browser touch touch id here and then again the user try to manage their own account here's like a simple model saying that the biometric is needed pass key selection again and then touch id um, because we are following the wow 2 standard, the application ended up having this identity token. Okay, so far so good. Uh, we saw all the use case. Um, perhaps another point to, to have in mind. In the step up scenario, I ended up uh, using pass keys because I love uh, the user experience. But again, you can play with multi-factor authentication. You can play with other authentication uh, mechanism as well. The, the, for me, one of the good things is, again, the, because the application is able to follow the authentication step, uh, defining the, the on key cloud in this case, uh, you end up having this uh, good experience uh, and the user stays in the app, there is no friction, there is no need to do the redirection to the IDP. So this is why the signing and the step up uh, authentication step uh, remains the same. The user experience is, is the same. So, um, so far so good. Let's jump into the presentation. So in the summary, we can see on the tip of the iceberg all the benefits that we have seen today. 
The first one, identity standard. As usual, if you want to succeed in the identity space, you must follow um, Open Standard. This is why here we are following Open ID Connect, OAuth, and this extension of the OAuth 2. The second point is the enhanced user experience, thanks to this API-based authentication approach. And thanks to that, we ended up having this kind of native authentication because the application is able to follow the authentication steps defined on the, on the digital journey on the identity provider. In this case, we implemented the passkeys login within the app, but you know that you can use another authentication uh, mechanism as well. Below, perhaps some point to bear in mind. The first one is the Kiko extension, but well, uh, my idea of talking here in the context of the Kiko conference to get traction and then to get official adoption within the Kiko platform. The second point, well, we are following a draft, I know, but I'm quite confident that thanks to all the things and benefits that we have seen today, that this draft will become a RFC as soon as possible. The first part of the application, well, you know that when you are playing with uh, the client, the OAuth 2 client, that you can use a confidential client or a public client. So in the confidential client, based on the specification, you end up having a, a, a client authentication. So it's easy to identify that that client is a third party application or not. But then in the public client, as we discussed today, it's not an easy task. So in that scenario, you can play with the app attestation at the other aspect that we have seen today in order to then be able to identify that that public client who is making the call is or not a first party app. And the last point, well, is the case. It's quite common to use an ACK in order to simplify the integration uh, between the application and IDP no matter if you are implementing the OpenID Connect standard or the OAuth 2 in this case, is something that you will need for sure. And here is the last slide. Well, um, in the first link is the article I wrote about this OAuth 2 for first part application, this kind of native uh, integration between the application at the ADP with PathKeys. So you can go there if you want to know more about it. And below, uh, the links to this uh, draft, uh, the OAuth 2 for first party and the other one about the OAuth 2 app attestation. So well, I think we cover all the points. So I would like to say thank you all for the ones who have been listening to this uh, conversation. Um, again, if you want to discuss it Further, you can find me on LinkedIn or through my social accounts. So again, thank you all. Um, see you. Bye.